Big time arms were everywhere at the Georgia Day Out Club tournament at Lake Point Sports. And here to discuss some of the event's top pitchers, I'm joined by PBR Georgia's Justin Guest. Justin, welcome back in. Yes, sir. Good to see you. I know it wasn't easy, but give us some of the top pitchers, the guys that made the most noise for you coming out of the GEC tournament. First, we've got the known spin rate master, Porter Bursima, right-handed pitcher from Blessed Trinity. Uh, he put himself on the map last summer with incredible spin numbers and end zone whiffs. Uh, the fastball works in the low 90s and creeps into mid at 2,500 RPM with cut ride. Um, you know, it was about 25 degrees in the start he made, and he was still working in the low 90s. Um, the slider's an absolute hammer for his age and a lock to be a future plus pitch. It, it moves like a wiffle ball with sudden sweep and flashes wipeout depth in the 26 20 to 2800 range. Um, very few arms have both such a high spin fastball and breaking ball, but that's not all. He's got the 11 5 curveball in the low 70s with plenty of potential and even higher spin than the slider. Um, his changeup has taken huge steps this spring and, uh, has some nice fade, and he's able to throw it to lefties pretty consistently right now. Um, it's an elite competitor with an explosive delivery that's very well sequenced, and he has the it factor, no doubt. Um, next arm is a MLB bloodline guy in Dane Moeller, right-handed pitcher from Walton, uh, 2024. It's my favorite delivery in the class, right there with Connor Schaus. Um Unbelievably compact and effortless in a prototype right-handed starter frame, 6'3", 180. Uh, lightning quick, short circle arm action works with near perfect efficiency and allows him to throw three pitches for strikes that all flash above average life right now. Um, the fastball is sitting a full two to three miles an hour higher than it did at future games with even more bore. Um, it's a big testament to his good work in the weight room as he's added 10 pounds of lean muscle over the fall and winter. Um, the curveball is a future power downer already in the mid 70s that he has exceptional feel for and works well off his top of the zone fastball. But the improved change in the 80 mile an hour range with sudden fade and depth separates him from all others in the class as far as starting pitchers go. Um, in my opinion, and can be a dominant pitch off the bottom of the zone fastball. So, yeah, he's he's really on the rise. Um, next, we've got Deshaun Morgan, right-handed pitcher from North Paulding. Um, another future gamer, one of the most effortless deliveries in the class with unreal, athletic, at, with unreal athleticism and elasticity on the bump. Uh, shown in his elite balance and hip shoulder separation, the arm speed absolutely jumps off the page and will only increase as he gets stronger. Uh, this is a future plus fastball in a, in a relief role with plus life. And if he's a starter, I think it'll still play up to plus or near it um, due to high spin in the electric bore on it. Um, he's got a mid upper 70s slurve that's high spin as well. And the life will only increase as he gets used to ripping the pitch with the intent of his fastball. And then his changeup really shocked me this week um, in the 79-81 range. Got three whiffs on left-handers in one inning. And I feel, and this is why I think he could have serious starter potential. Um, and the composure is very impressive on the bump. I mean, looks like he's not even trying out there. Not a worry in the world. Um, then we've got Matthew Sharman, junior future gamer, 2026 right-handed pitcher from Etowa. Might have had the biggest performance of the entire two weeks. Not only does he have one of the most advanced fastballs in the class in terms of velo and life, but has by far the most advanced change in the class, which was absolutely dominant this weekend. Uh, the fastball worked in the 86 to 88 range with vicious run and sick at times. And the change looked like an actual screwball with a handful of whiffs in the innings. I saw um, faced one of the best teams and offenses in the state in Loganville with a ton of D one commits. And it looked like he had been there before 
and the delivery is very fluid and well sequenced. Um, and then finish it up with uh, a very exciting lefty in 2024 Miller Alston from Walton. Um, this was the number one pop-up arm in all of GDC. And while he may be undersized, this is a very athletic arm with both ease of operation and quick twitch fibers. Uh, the delivery and arm action are nearly identical to Billy Wagner. And I'm saying just the delivery. Uh, if you want to look at my tweet on that, it's it's shocking, um, which makes me even more convicted on him than the stuff. But he creates plus angle and deception in a compact crossfire delivery that proved nearly impossible for hitters to track. He got five fastball whiffs in one inning in nine and two innings. Um, the fastball works in the 85-87 range with very late tail uh, in the trajectory. And he hit a PR of 89 twice, which, um, you know, shows to the velo potentially has at only 5'10-ish, 150 pounds. So as soon as the muscle comes, the strength comes, the velo is going to be there. But uh, he's got an impressive 74 to 77 sweeping slider that's very sharp, uh, flashes late depth, and I think it has a, above average potential. And then the change has very similar life to his fastball, and I think can be an average pitch down the line and separates him even more. That's just a taste of what you get if you give him a follow on Twitter at PBR. While you're at it, give PBR Georgia a follow as well. Justin, man, absolutely fantastic stuff. Thanks, and we'll see you on the diamond. Follow McCartney for tweets too, man. They're electric. <laughs>